Hello and welcome to my knife channel. What we have here is an M7 bayonet in an M8A1 scabbard. And this one is marked VP Co., which stands for Victory Plastics. Um, this one is in very good, basically, unused shape. I had to look up on it to see whether or not they came sharpened, and they did, because a bayonet is usually unsharpened, and the reason being it's not really a utility knife. It's designed to stick on the end of a rifle and uh, stab things. So if it's unsharpened, then it's going to make a bigger wound when it goes into something. It's going to give blunt trauma, you know, damage to it. But this is kind of like they kind of started transitioning from a bayonet to a bayonet slash utility knife. Um, but this one, they started making these in 1961. And over 3 million were made. And on a lot of people see it and they look at it and they look at the markings and they go, Oh, it's an M8A1 bayonet. No, this is the scabbard. And the A1 is because... The original one didn't have a metal tongue down here. And when they parachuted out, they wound up getting bayoneted by their own bayonet sometimes. So they modified that. But this particular type of sheath has been made since, I believe, 1944. But anyways, the knife itself... Now, the markings, all you're going to find is that marking right there. But if you look... Let's see if I can get it up underneath here. Stop bouncing around. And we'll have to zoom in. Oh, it's on this side. And well, there it is. It's just not very focused. Focus right there. There you go. It says VP... And then there's like a line on top of it and a number six. That's the number six there. I don't think that's the year of manufacture or anything. I just really don't know what that number stands for because I've seen in other pictures they would show a six a nineteen sixties, you know, like sixty eight model bayonet and it would have that scabbard on it and it said VP and then it had a nine on you know under it, so Anyway, um, the story on this one is, I got this one in the mid-1980s, once I got out of the service, uh, that we had uh, some Marines working for us at the uh, rifle and pistol range, and uh, I did a barter, I did a trade with him for some ammo, he brought me this one up, and the only thing I can see on the scabbard is just this little cut here. But it works well. It's got the original gear on it. And a lot of times you don't see them coming with this. Um, it looks like a basically a shoestring type of uh, material. But I think it was... Mine did not come with a scabbard or anything. And the only markings you'll find on the blade. This is 1095 steel. Is Let's see if we can get it up here. See that? Imperial... And then USM7. Right up there. It's uh, sharpened along the length here. It's 1095 carbon steel. And then it's sharpened on this. This used to be what it was a, considered a false edge. But now it's still a sharpened edge. And the purpose for a bayonet was. Originally it was a, a piece of metal you stuck in the end of your barrel after you fired. And it allowed you to turn your rifle into a spear. And then they started discovering that, hey, if we put a little ring on there, we can fire through it. So this is the uh, attachment mechanism. There's basically on an M16, there's a lug, and this clips into it, and this just slips over the barrel. And uh, this is what really holds it in place. This just kind of like helps balance it. If the knife is put like this, where you grab it, you can just put your thumb through the thing to start it out 
but it'll go in on either side on the bayonet and uh, this is hard plastic kind of like bake like or something really hard and fairly grippy type of plastic it's a thin blade there and uh, let's see it uh, national stock number is 1095-00-017-9701. The manufacturers were Bear Ordnance Company. A lot of times it'll be marked BOC on the um, guard up there. Carl Eckhorn for Colt. And then Colt, uh, also the one that manufactured the M16. Ontario Knife Company made them. Columbus Millpar, Canetta Manufacturing, Fraser Manufacturing, and General Cutlery, plus Imperial Knife. It's 11.75 inches long overall, 29.8 centimeters. Blade length is 6.75 inches, or 17.1 centimeters. It's made out of 1095 carbon steel, 3 sixteenths of an inch blade. The scabbard can either be an M8 an M8A1 or an M10, and um, the weight is 9.6 ounces. It's similar to the older M4 that was used on the M1 carbine, and uh, it's similar to the M14 bayonet, except that the the M7, I mean the M, the one that was used on the M14 has a a little bar. It attaches differently for its locking lugs, but. Anyways, it's a pretty good knife. I've never, um, it'll also fit on a Mossberg 590, uh, A1 type of shotgun. I'll probably include some pictures of the, uh, M16 that I had with this particular bayonet on the end of it. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're all right. They're, they're fairly well balanced in the hand and everything. They make a, a halfway decent, um, I guess self-defense tool if you had to have one, you know, just lying there. But they're really more designed for being stuck on the end of a rifle and poking. That's their main thing. You know, that it's pretty tough tough steel and it comes with a parkerizing on it. And these covers here can be removed. I don't think I've removed them anytime recently. Uh, there's always just like a little gap right there on it. But, uh, yeah, this one's, the only scrapes it's got on is from going in and out of the scabbard. And it still has most of its parkerizing on it. A little bit of rust there I need to take care of. Um, yeah, but other than that, the scabbard, it looks like it was, it had been used, you know, carried quite a bit. But, yeah, there you go. I'd. This knife was probably manufactured in the, the mid-80s itself. I think Imperial was one of the last ones uh, to manufacture knives. And uh, the scabbard itself, this BP company, Victory Plastics, um, they stopped, they went out of business in 1964, which is kind of strange. But the military does that sometimes. They mismatch you know, knives with scabbards and stuff like that. And anyways, there you go. That's my bayonet. No longer have... I used to have a Mossberg 590A1. Don't have that anymore. And uh, M16 with three different upper receivers. Don't have that anymore either. But, this still works as a bayonet. Fits pretty well in the hand. The back here you can use for pounding stuff if you have to. And it's a... Nice, good, overall size blade there. So there you go. Thought I'd share that one with you. Oops, sorry, bouncing the... Bouncing my bouncy thing. Hitting my bouncy thing, but yeah. Very decent um, little bayonet. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.